All right, uh, let's stay in New York. We'll go to Western New York. And Chippewa Street is absolutely <laughs> fired up right now with the way the Bills are playing football. Yeah. But they were also pretty high, landing the biggest free agent of the offseason. Top 10 scores are hard to find, and I understand why they make that move. Where would the New Jersey Devils be without Taylor Hall in the lineup? He's given the New Jersey Devils somebody to just pick the club up and carry it on its back. He's making the push for the hard throw. It's an exciting finish here. And the hard goes to Tyler Hall. The Devils fall to 5-8-4, and four, yeah. and the struggle sort of continuing for this team, not meeting the expectations. It's been a struggle for them. At what point do they entertain the idea of dealing a Taylor Hall? Breaking news, right. the Taylor Hall deal is done. Hall to Arizona for two picks and two prospects to the Devils. Adding Taylor Hall to the mix for the Coyotes, it seems to me like they just took things up to the next level. One of those big names that is signed and knows where he is headed is Taylor Hall, is the newest member of the Buffalo Sabres. But I'm betting that the Sabres uh, can improve and have a good hockey season. All right, so they get the former former league MVP, Taylor Hall, signing the one-year $8 million ticket to go to the Buffalo Sabres. You see some of the other faces uh, joining Hall in upstate western New York out there uh, in Buffalo, and the Sabres certainly making some noise this offseason. Rupper, I'll start with you on this one. The additions of Taylor Hall, you pair him with a guy like Jack Eichel. That duo, do they lead the Buffalo Sabres back to the playoffs for the first time in more than a decade? The only thing not working in their favor is their division. Mm. <laughs> because, yes, in, in a normal situation, I would say, yes, this team will be knocking on the door. They still will be knocking on the door. So, yeah, you know what, J-Mo, they're a very exciting team. And I like their insurance policy moves that they have here because you get a guy blew us all out of the water with the Taylor Hall move, right? Sure, so, totally. So the idea is, yeah, Eichel and Hall. I mean, that's world class. What, do, what do, You know, you can't expect or ask for anything more. But if in case the chemistry is not quite there, they went out and they got Eric Stahl, yeah. who's a very wily guy who's been around for a long time, Stanley Cup winner, we see, you know, very well. This Eric Stahl is certainly capable of playing with Hall as well. So Hall has options for center ice position. But when you look at this roster, that's a nice group. I mean, nice they, they've got front. some moving parts going around. And, and uh, you know, let's not forget down there, 42 on the bottom. Cousins, man. Totally. How good was he in the World Juniors? And to, the biggest thing that he showed me in World Juniors is he looked like a young man mm -hmm. that was ready to take on the physical attributes of, of an NHL player. So very exciting things in Buffalo right Dylan now. Dylan Cousins, Jeff Skinner. Not a bad fourth line, right? Hey, listen. Dylan Cousins, the workhorse from Whitehorse way up north in northern Canada. That guy is legit. Every shift for me, hands down, Aside from their goalie, Devin Levi, he was the best player for Team Canada, shift to shift in the World Juniors. He's ready, he's jacked, and he's primed. And let's sprinkle this out there, too. And I don't know, there's only one puck to play uh, play with on the ice. But yeah. if Jeff Skinner can get back to Jeff Skinner form True. of a couple years ago, I mean, he's a, maybe not in a 56-game season, but he's a he's on the 82-game season, 30-goal guy. Mm -hmm. This team could be lethal, like a lot of firepower on the front end. Totally. Uh, Cody Eakin, too, coming in as yep. a third-line center. I like that. I like Cody Eakin coming in. He played very well in Vegas. I thought he, he showed some offensive flair, but he's responsible as a penalty killer, a 200-foot game. He gives them a little bit of jam. And I think that this team is a lot more complete up front. I, I said, say that. Line one through four, they're a deeper team. They're more complete. And listen, if you're the Sabres, come on, fellas. You don't want to see the Bills getting all the love, which they deserve. Shout out to the Bills. Absolutely. Same ownership group and everything else. But... Hey, listen, as the fans are celebrating. Piggybacked up momentum. Exactly. Yeah. Piggybacked up momentum. You don't want the fans to just be eating the Lenovo chicken and wings and pizza and all that <laughs> stuff up there for the Bills. You want them eating it for the Sabres. Yeah. So, I, listen, I, I think the Sabres can, uh, can make a nice U-turn this year and have a nice progression. But I do agree, Rupper. The division is what's going to make it tough. But I certainly think that it's going to be a much better season up in Buffalo where they're great fans. You said off the top. That division, throw it in the blender. Four teams, who knows yeah. who could come out. So maybe Buffalo is one of those four. The